copyrights so you may not be able to download and use it yourself this is one advantage second advantage is it is a free software so there is a uh, georgiba institute is there they are giving it uh, in a free and open source software so you can uh, use it according to your uh, convenience uh, and another interesting important thing is this software is work in many platform that means even if you are doing in windows or you if you are using in uh, ubuntu or mac whatever platform you are using it is uh, no problem you can work in all type of platforms i am using ubuntu i hope many of you may be familiar with ubuntu or otherwise if you are having windows in windows also it will work so this is a short introduction for the software so uh, usually what we used to have in ris and ncert we used to conduct workshops on geogebra for 5 days uh, five day workshop we will have so first day uh, and second day it will be basic tools first day and second day we will introduce all the tools and participants will do hands on workshop for uh, geogebra basics so they will uh, get familiarized with uh, basic uh, geogebra tools uh, later they will start developing their own applets applets in the sense that okay uh, sir we cannot see the screen sir hello screen is not shown sir hello or is only we can see the one week i have not shared the screen screen is not visible i have not shared the screen so far okay sir okay Then so uh, what we will uh, what after that one what they, the participants will do is they will develop the applets which can be used in their classroom different levels of applets third day and fourth day they will prepare their own applets and uh, they will explore to the higher uh, levels of geogebra in that five day workshop but uh, we have a very few time future uh, being the key resource persons from nepal what you can do is future you can design the geogebra workshop for your own school, uh, teachers in various uh, schools in a rigorous way in four day or five day and geogebra can be learned yourself okay so what i will do is i will now i will share the screen hope you can see the the page of geogebra is it visible yes sir okay yes sir so once you open geogebra file uh, you can see left hand side this will be the icon for geogebra when you have geogebra on your desktop such an icon will be there once you click it will open like this this is the interface so you you have uh, an algebra interface and a graphic interface this is the graphic graph paper and uh, there as a any word file if you open there will be file edit view options all these things will be there and these boxes are called tool boxes these boxes are called tool boxes in which different tools are arranged in a systematic way so once you keep your cursor on the small triangle on this screen and click on that one you will see a drop down menu drop down menu will show what are the tools available here this is a point tool if you click here you can see the other tools arranged in this box once you click it will be highlighted you can see it is highlighted you can draw mark points here and once you mark point immediately you can say see in the algebra window its coordinates are coming <laughs> once your work is over click on the move button either click with your mouse or otherwise click the escape button on the bar so you can get this points
at the same time you can see below there is input bar is there where you can type a capital a or a is already used so what i will do is i will d start a bracket three four so once i simply type d three four it will show unknown command because we don't know what to do with the d so put an equal to sign enter so you can see d so this is how you can use input bar uh, there are many other facilities are there in the input bar that we will see later i just want to show these are the some interfaces of geogebra algebra in uh, file will be used for saving the files taking a new file all these things uh, edit view option all these options are there similarly you will have uh, tool boxes which will we will explore throughout this uh, session then there are two windows are there one is an algebra window and another, another one is graphics window and uh, there is an input bar these are the preliminary things we have uh, in the geogebra actually you can see here there is a small triangle on the right side uh, i don't know if it is visible to you. you once my mouse is there you can see a small triangle if you click it will show another windows graphing window is there cas is there geometry window 3d is there uh, all these things are there if time permits we will explore them not all actually we will we, try to explore 3d if possible uh, but sometimes uh, some systems immediately want support 3d okay so this is the general picture of your geogebra file now what we will do is we will start exploring geogebra with the different tools and i will show some applets which you can use it later what i will do is i will construct this one two times i will repeat the construction the video is already recorded that i will share with uh, the authorities as well as the geogebra files also i will share later not immediately you can watch that one you can see and uh, you can work out later otherwise problem will be uh, usually in hands on workshop what we used to do is we will uh, how enough time for our interaction of with the participants so once you make some error we will be able to correct that mistakes we will go near the participant we will check their uh, system what mistake they are making those facilities not there for online courses so you have and uh, you will be standing in different levels that is also one problem okay so when we construct any geometrical figure uh, what you should do is you should think as uh, how you construct this in a sheet of paper okay so let me make it a sheet of plain sheet of paper first for that purpose what i will do is uh, you have this it is looking like a graph paper i don't want grid if i don't want grid you can see here the grid button i can click if i click it will show once again i click it will go so grid is gone if i don't want axis again i will click here axis will be gone so now i got a plain paper in that plain paper what i am going to do is i am going to draw a rectangle of sides uh, 5 unit and 4 unit so first thing what i am going to do is i will make some uh, initial arrangements here I will go for options rounding it is two decimal places i will tell that labeling should be all new objects whenever i click a new object it should be labeled okay the first thing i will do is i will mark a point a zero zero i use the input bar to make the point once again i will repeat the uh, step a in the input bar i will type a equal to 
I will start a bracket, then automatically bracket will be closed. I will type here zero comma zero. So I get a point. Then next one, what I want is actually there is some construction work is going on near my institute. So you may get disturbance. Uh, sorry. Then what I want is uh, I want a line of length five unit passing through A. So what I will do is I will go to the line tool. There are many tools uh, are there. I will click on the triangle. Then segment with given length I will choose. I will choose segment with given length. If I keep the mouse here, it will show the instruction what I should do. I I should select the point, then enter the length. What I should do, I will, first what I will do is, I will choose the segment with given length, then I will click on A. Whenever I am saying clicking, always the click is a left click. It is a left click. If it is right click, I will clearly tell right click. Otherwise, it is I will just say that click. If I click, it will ask for the length. I tell that it should be five unit. I will type five in this here. I will get a segment. It is not showing its length. Uh, it is showing its name. You can see here in the algebra window, its length is five unit. Once again, I am going to repeat the process. Segment with the given length. Click on A. Type five. I will get the length. Uh, so, sir, one second. There is a disturbance is there. That is why I am keeping quiet. They are doing some construction work here. Now what I will do is, next uh, work is, I want to draw a perpendicular to this line passing through P. So this is the next construction. I want to draw a perpendicular to line AB passing through P. So what I will do is, uh, usually for drawing perpendicular, what we will do is, we will take uh, some uh, protractor or some uh, compass construction but here we have a tool actually next to the line tool there is another line box is there their perpendicular line tool is there Click okay, on that yeah, piece. 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 hello hello it's fine sir Hello. Yes, sir. We are listening, sir. Continue, sir. Not audible, sir. Continue, sir. Continue. You are audible to us, sir. Hello. 
You are audible to us. Madhu sir, please continue. Madhu sir, we are not listening. Can you type that uh, what you are telling in the chat box? Because I am not, uh, you are not audible. Uh, sir, you can continue, sir. You can. Okay. Uh, so what we will do is, I want to draw the perpendicular. I will go to the perpendicular line tool, click on B and click on the line. So I will get a perpendicular line. Once again, I am repeating the process. I will go to the perpendicular line toolbox, click on B and click on the AB, line AB. So I got a perpendicular line. So this is one side. Similarly, I want one perpendicular line here also and one perpendicular line here also. Uh, this side perpendicular line, what I am going to do now is this f is five, 5 unit so i want uh, on bc should be 4 unit so for that purpose i will go to the circle tool i will choose actually what you will do in the uh, paper pen method is you will take the compass and cut an arc of 4 unit length but in this case you need not worry of cutting an arc the easier one is you can draw the complete circle so what I will do is I will take the circle with center and radius. So I will click on B. Then it asks for the radius. I will tell my radius should be 4 unit. Once again, I will show this process. I want an arc of length uh, 4 unit. For that purpose, I will choose the circle tool with circle center and radius. So many circle tools are here. I will take circle with center and radius. My center is B. So I will click on B. Then it will ask for the radius. I will give the radius is 4 unit. Then click OK. So I got the circle. Clearly this circle cuts this line G exactly at 4 unit above. So what I will do is I want to mark this particular point. So what I will do is I will go to the point tool back again and I will take the uh, intersect tool. I have taken intersect tool. And what intersect tool says is either you have to click on the intersection point or the two objects. So I will go and I will click on the intersection point. So I got the points. Next is what I will do is I will I want to draw a line perpendicular to this BC and passing through C like a line I want. Otherwise I have to draw a perpendicular here or other I have to draw a perpendicular here. So I am going to draw a perpendicular uh, here. That perpendicular here is actually parallel to AP. So I will go here. I will take parallel line click on C and click on AB. So I got a line. 
parallel to this one. Again, go to the perpendicular line, click on A, click here, I got another perpendicular line. I can mark this point as point of intersection. So I got all required points A, B, C, D. But so many constructions are there. So I want to hide all unnecessary constructions. What I am going to do is I will hide F, I will hide G, I will hide C, H and I. I have only four points. There are two ways now with us. One is join all these with line segments. But if I join these with line segments, uh, the software will take it as a set of line segments. It will not treat it as a rectangle. So what I will do is I will go to the polygon tool. There is a polygon tool is there. I will click on the polygon tool. What it says is select all vertices then first vertex again. Select all vertices A, B, C, D and first vertex again. So I got the required one. If I simply join them with a line segment, there is a segment tool is there. If I join them with segment segments, you can see how it happens. A, B, I got one segment. Then again, B, C, I got another segment. C, D, then I got another segment. So I got a rectangle, as you see, the, the difference you can see. You can see a rectangle here also, uh, but if you trade, take the polygon tool, A, B, you can see the color difference. That means now the computer is taking it as a rectangle. You can see one more data. Its area is also shown. Q1 is the area of this one. Okay. Suppose you don't want to show the names A, B, C, D. What you should do is you can right click on D. Right click. This time I am telling right click on D. Go to the object property. So it will one window will be open there. It says, what is your T? T is the segment D and A. So what I can do is it will ask its label object, all the things. What I can show is I can say value should be shown. I will repeat the process again for all sides. Then it will be clear to you. Right click on A. Go to the object property, choose value, close it, right click on B, go to the object properties, choose value, right click on C, go to the object property, choose value. So I got rectangle with all required information. Suppose you want to show its uh, area here. What you will do is you will go to the box mentioning showing the angle sign. Click there. There is a tool called area. Now it is highlighted. Click inside the screen. Inside the. So it is showing area ABCD is 20 units. Actually, you can go for distance or length and uh, click on the screen. Its uh, perimeter will be shown. So, this is one way of construction. Uh, if you want to ask immediately something, you can ask here as in the comment box.
Now, I'm removing this uh, area and uh, this one for some time. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, same construction, in the same construction, I am doing one more thing. Uh, what this time I am going to do is, I, I have a tool called midpoint tool. So what I am going to do is, I will choose that tool and I can choose the midpoint of AB by clicking A and B. Or I can, uh, uh, next what I will do is, I will choose the midpoint of BC by clicking on the line segment BC. So, BC. I can either I can click on C and D, I will get the midpoint, or otherwise, uh, carefully, what I can do is I can click on the line segment. So, I will get the midpoint. So, I got all midpoints. Then I am repeating the polygon tool again. Uh, I will keep this uh, E, F. G and H. Those things you can just drag all these things. I hope you are familiar with uh, simple uh, things like uh, dragging and other things. Now I will choose the polygon tool and uh, E F G H. So I got another polygon inside that one. You can see the color difference. not writing the label here okay so i got this uh, sides length also i'm not showing but what i observed is in the algebra window the area of the first rectangle is 20 and the second rect rectangle is 10. so one way what i got is this area is the bigger rectangle area and the relation between the smaller rectangle is the bigger one is double of the smaller one. So the question is, uh, we can ask the students that this is done for one rectangle. Uh, is it true for all rectangles or is it true for any quadrilateral which you are drawing? So let us see that uh, question in different way. Uh, I am going to go for a general question. I am going to delete this work. Anyway, we will share this video later. So this construction is very simple. So you can watch the video and see the construction. So what it says, what I am going to ask you is, I am just drawing a polygon, not even a rectangle. For quadrilateral, I am drawing a quadrilateral. I got a quadrilateral. Then I marked the midpoints of the sides. B, B, C, C, D, and D. Actually, I don't want to show the label of these things. Then again, I am going to draw this uh, joining them 
with another polygon tool e f g h I have to complete by clicking back on e so i got another one then the question uh, what i want to what i will observe is i this advantage now is i can change this rectangle or quadrilateral meanwhile everything is changed so i can show see the i can look into algebra window and i can see the relation between these two but suppose you want to show it to the students you don't want to show the complete construction work or anything to the students actually you don't want to show them the algebra window what i am going to do is i am going to round it to one decimal place for convenience or even sometimes for smaller classes that is why i asked when anybody is in the smaller class we can uh, remove the decimal rounding to the zero decimal places but uh, sometimes it will create some approximation anyway what i am going to do is i will go to the last but one toolbox there is a text toolbox is there i choose the text toolbox i click there it will ask then i, I am giving area a b c d so problem is area a b c d is actually changing if i change pull any any side a or b or c or d its value is changing so what i am typing it should also change so for that one we have a dynamic text called from this one if i type area a b c d if and i and if i type q1 alone it will always show q1 if i type q1 you can see the preview preview is showing q1 what is q1 again you have to go to algebra window to avoid that one you will go to the objects and there is a drop down will be there from there i will choose q1 now you see the value is showing 73 okay so area a b c d is 73 now similarly what you will do is you again click here it will ask area e f g h equal to this time what i will do is i will choose q2 now you just change this change remember that you can change only a b c and d because e f g h you cannot change you see if we pull here it is not moving because it is defined using a b c d a b c d is independent and uh, e f g h is dependent so i can pull this one and at any time you can ask the children to observe what is the relation between these two i told you there is sometimes it will make some approximation because you rounded to one digit it may create some approximation but by suitably choosing you can ask the children to make their hypothesis on this one later you can try to prove it mathematically remember that the geogebra is not a tool to show you uh, give you proof it is not giving proof it is help you in making some observation and hypothesizing something Okay. So, with this construction, uh, I think okay. If there is a grid, and axis, I can do something else also. I can make it. Uh, like the previous cases which you have done you can make it like pull it and drag it earlier cases
so now you can ask the children uh, many many conjectures they can make if you simply draw it on blackboard you may the children may give only one answer but now we have freedom for experimenting with this one okay now again uh, i will remove this construction completely i will go to another one now we have drawn a polygon okay now the question is uh, if i want to draw a particularly square instead of rectangle the construction one construction as you told uh, the construction will be similar to this one you will draw a uh, equal to 0 0 then you will draw line segment with uh, okay line segment if i draw it will be problem line segment with the given length so i will click i will say four unit then i will draw a perpendicular draw an arc all this procedure you will do okay instead of suppose i want to draw a square there is another tool called regular polygon so i will click here a then next point b it will ask how many sides i want vertices i want and automatically it is giving show four so i'll click on four i got a square then question is what happens if i give five i'll get a pentagon so uh, this is okay suppose i want uh, every time i am constructing new new uh, things so suppose i want to construct it automatically then i will use a very strong tool of geogebra called slider tool this is this tool is actually making geogebra different from any other software which you are using this is act like a variable so you are going to use slider tool what the slider tool will do is i will click a and b here i will choose slider tool i click on the screen there are three types of sliders are there number slider is there angle slider is there integer slider is there among these three sliders i can choose any one and if it is a number slider the value will be from minus 5 to plus 5 it will increase with a value of 0.1 if it is an angle slider it will be from 0 to 360 degree with 1 degree increase increase it will change but what i want is i want to change the number of sides so it will always it should be an integer actually a natural number so i will choose integer slider and then its value will be name will be n and it will 1 to 30 it is showing you can change anything one you anyway one side polygon will not be there so two side polygon will not be there so three you can start three to 30 suppose you want more say 50 you can make it 50 increment one nothing happened you got you did not get a uh, triangle or anything you just got a slider here then this time i will go to the regular polygon tool click on a b it will ask for number of vertices what i will give is n i will type there n and i got a polygon okay what is so particular about that one now i click on the move button click on n just move i got a just use your arrow key make it little smaller okay click on this slider just use your arrow key up to 50 you can go if 
but uh, while doing this one this activity uh, you might have observed one interesting feature this works like a circle see in the beginning just a polygon 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 but it is going closer and closer to the circle so this gives an idea of another construction using the same technique that is what we are going to do now so i think uh, this construction should i repeat please sir okay so what i am going to do is i am going to begin same thing but this time what i will do is i will take taken a point o and uh, i will take a circle with the center and some point okay circle name i don't want to show now what i am going to do is i will take uh, angle with given size there is two tools are there one is for drawing any angle another one is drawing a per, per, one this first one can be used for measuring the angle the second one can be used for angle with a given size okay and while marking the you can see what are the things it is asking it is asking for a leg point vertex and then you have to enter the size but this time you should be very careful while choosing the leg point and vertex also in measuring the clockwise measurement and anti clockwise measurement will give you different value so what i will do is I have to choose the leg point and vertex i will click on a then vertex o it is asking for angle automatically it is showing 360 degree Uh, so forty-five degree. But what I am going to do is three sixty divided by n. I am going to give. I am dividing the central angle with uh, the number of vertices I want. So I got this angle. Actually, you can, if you don't want to show this value here, you can go to the algebra window, click on the blue button. It will hidden. okay now what i am going to do is i am going to choose the regular polygon to click on a then click on a dash it is asking for vertices now i will give my slider value n here okay so what is advantage for this one i will hide the labels okay now i click on n equal to 3 just move the slide now you may see that you may feel now that uh, this polygons is actually equal to the circles but uh, what you do is uh, suppose you zoom in here this place you see there is gap still it is not circled so we will do one thing we will again increase 
now you may feel that okay uh, here it becomes circled but you just zoom again there is a gap since i have on 49 or 50 i have to stop here i can change the slider value uh, again i will look here there is gap actually once i zoom there is a big gap so what you can see here is or what you have observed here is another interesting feature if you use the dynamic text it will be very uh, easily you can show that i will choose uh, this area and i will click on the circle area of the circle is 317.5 it is again remember that it is an approximate value and uh, if i click on the polygon 131.3 now i will use the dynamic text area of circle equal to area i can see in the algebra window it is uh, 317.5 is o so go to objects take o so area of circle is showing here area of polygon 1 is uh, this value poly 1 so what i will do is again area of polygon inscribed polygon actually poly one click on o and actually you can what you can do is you can uh, hide this and this okay now you can ask the children you change this uh, values observe what happens to the area of the inscribed polygon you can see that it is coming closer and closer and closer to your 317 actually what here uh, this rounding has some role you make it four decimal places okay so it is approximating to the area of the circle so this is what uh, our archimedes was doing but not through geometry he was uh, doing very mathematically that he will inscribe some circles circumcise inscribe some circles and argue that the total area of the circle is uh, lies between inscribed polygon and circumscribed polygon but we have a software to do that one and even for the 9th class 8 10th class students you can give the feeling of this area of the polygon is approximating to the area of the circle so this is the way actual way of uh, proving the finding the value of pi so this uh, this applet can be used for that purpose now 
with this uh, same circle we can make another construction only with circle and this one what i am going to do is i am going to choose uh, okay so also i will delete i just want another uh, construction here i will go to a tool called point on object take a tool on point on objects so advantage is i can move my b only on this circle i cannot move anywhere else okay next what i will do is i will go to circle with center and through point with the uh, center is b and uh, passing through <coughs> a center is b and passing through a i will hide my o even i can hide b and a also and d's name i will hide this construction i will repeat again then so b let it be there right click on the circle okay once again i will construct this much uh, one more time okay all these things were there i will hide o o don't don't have any role but uh, my i can see that my b is uh, can be moved along the circle circumference of the circle then what i will do is i will choose a circle through point i will choose its center as b passing through a i will uh, show the label of d then what i will do is i will go to the d right click on d go to the object property i will make its uh, little coloring effect i will give so blue color then go to the basic there is some option called show trace is there click on show trace then coming back to this b right click on b there is a animation on is there so you got something called cardioid stop this one there is a pause button you can click on that one once you hold it will so you will get the cardioid Yes, sir. Uh, Ram Prasad, sir, what you told is correct. 
the earlier activity which is actually uh, helpful for showing the limit and one more thing is in the class 8th 9th 10th without mentioning that uh, the uh, technical language which we use in class 11 and 12 we can treat uh, introduce the concept of limit for the students yes sir yes exactly okay so i think uh, we we'll go to another construction okay Okay, so this time what I want is uh, I want to draw a triangle with uh, AB equal to 10 units and uh, perimeter is equal to 25 units. Such a triangle I want to draw. So the initial thing is as usual, we will go to a segment uh, with the given length. I will draw A, then I will put uh, 10, I will get So you have this uh, length, uh, this triangle is there. Then uh, you will do some uh, mental calculation before proceeding. Okay. What uh, we will do here is, uh, we know that this length is 10, but total perimeter should be 25. So the remaining two sides, its sum should be 15. So there are different options are there. I can go for 10 plus 5, one option. Or I can go for 11 plus 4. Or 8 plus 7. Different options are there. So I am fixing 8 plus 7. So I want my BZ should be 8 unit and uh, AC should be 7 unit. So idea is I will draw a circle with center and radius. Click on B, make it uh, 8 units, I will get a circle, then click on A, I will get 7 unit, then I will take its uh, point of intersection, I got a C, then I will hide all other constructions including the side F, I will get a polygon. A, B, C, A. But uh, note that uh, this polygon which I have drawn, I can pull A, everything will be coming. I can only rotate B because A, B length I have fixed. C, I cannot even move. Okay. You can press shift key and click on A, B and C1. Right click, 
and go to the object property directly i can show that value should be shown values should be shown but problem is this is fixed a b c is fixed then question is but i know that this is not the only possible way so what i want to do is i want to uh, use the power of geogebra to show that many such uh, triangles are possible that is what we are going to do now. okay i will I'm going to hide this uh, delete this work A and B is fixed. Now, what I will do is I will choose the slider tool. This time, I will choose a number slider. Now, what I will do again? I will go. I am going to do some mental calculation. So I want uh, this uh, BC plus uh, AC should be fifty. If I know BC is X unit, I can tell AC is equal to fifteen minus X. Or if I know AC, uh, okay, AC is fifteen minus X. So what I will do is I will choose my that X value. Can vary from one to fifty, one five. You'll see now all these values. Instead of x, it will always show a. A value will be like this. Okay. So what we will do is. Uh, I told you that increment will be point one always, or point zero one. Uh, I know that for the uh, this x, x a value value of a can vary from one to fifteen if that is my b c b c is small a. So I will click OK. I got a slider. Its value will go from one to fifteen. You can see that. i will go to the options routing two decimal <coughs> now again same calculation uh, same construction go to the center and radius click on b ask for radius there you will type a not the value of a you will type a so i got a very small something and uh, what is a uh, how to check this construction is correct you just uh, <coughs> as it moves it is changing now you come to the uh, second part click on a <coughs> here you type 15 minus a now go to the intersect tool click on circle c and circle d you got two points of intersections uh, you can uh, hide this uh, f c d all these things then you can complete the polygon by a b d then what is advantage is you change this a okay if you don't want to show c hide c for some time you can 
Once you click, you can use the arrow key also. Now, interestingly, what if I give trace on to these uh, sites? Trace on, trace on, and right click on here, give animation. Actually, you can do one more thing. You can click on C. Simply click uh, trace on to C. Again, you give animation. Okay. At this stage, you can ask the children, uh, what is the shape of this uh, path traced by C and D? So, obviously, they can tell that it is ellipse. Then the question is, why it is ellipse? So, what we can uh, tell is, this is the determining condition for your ellipse. Actually, this uh, AD plus BD is a constant and A and B acts as FOZ for the ellipse. So this is one uh, thing which we uh, determine the ellipse or this is the technique we use to draw the ellipse. So uh, this is one thing we can use with the slider tool for I think uh, we can have uh, one more construction uh, now using slider. What I will do is I will slider value also I will do one thing. One to fifteen is showing. One to twenty, I will show, and I will make its increment as uh, zero point zero one. And you can see, uh, you can make it as a vertical slider also if you want. One thing. Second is how it is repeating. Now, according to this one, it will oscillate. It will go up to twenty, then it will come back. You can make simply increasing slider, you can make it decreasing slider, you can make it increasing once only. All this process you can do. Okay. 
color position everything you can change you can make it uh, color also all these facilities are there. okay uh, let it be here what is my plan is i will draw a right angled triangle okay so if you know that uh, the basic uh, many principles are there for drawing right angled triangles uh, even the egyptians what they used to do is uh, they will make around uh, 12 small segments of equal length uh, not uh, ah, yes 12 uh, then they will drag in such a way that uh, you can, uh, it's a kind of chain. So, what you will do is one side you will keep three, other side you keep four, then uh, you hold diagonally, it should the, exactly the five units should come to the end point. So, this is the basic idea they used to do for uh, drawing the triangle. This uh, is, I think, all ancient uh, civilizations were using this technique. But anyway, what I am going to do is I will take uh, one segment AB, then I will make uh, angle with uh, given size B, A, ask uh, what angle I want. I will give 90. So I got a B dash. So now what I will do is I will uh, hide F. Then I will uh, join B, A, B dash. Then, if I pull this B, Santoshi, Madam, me. Oh, oh, I need to be more Sir, if somebody is talking, please uh, type in the chat box. I told you that there is a huge disturbance here. I cannot hear what you are telling. If you want to ask something or tell something, please uh, type here. Otherwise, mute yourself. Okay. So, uh, this is what uh, you have constructed. Then, uh, what you can do is uh, in the algebra window uh, means input box what I am going to do is I am going to type uh, P backslash A1 A1 how to type is I will type underscore 1 then I will hit A1 type here I will get a value C is equal to 0 0.7 then I will just type here if you want to show it in a very beautiful way some small changes I am going to make here A, B I am going to make this point uh, as uh, rename it as C okay and uh, then I have to rename in such a way that Usually we have a method to rename these things. I will remove this one. Uh, this side BC is opposite to A. So I will put it as, uh, rename it as uh, 
A. So automatically Strider name changed. That's okay. We will take it later. This side is B. This side is C. Okay. Then what I will do is I will take uh, some S equal to B by One more thing I can make is I can mark the angle with given size. Uh, so not angle with given size. What I'm going to do is uh, I will take uh, angle, measure the angle. C, B, A. That angle is presently 45 degree. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is uh, go to the algebra. Let's go to the text. Here. I will take uh, S of I am just defining something. And there is a something called latex formula is there. I can click here. Then I can type here if I want to have a fraction backslash FR A C there B by A, which is equal to, again, FRAC, B, by A, equal to what I got is uh, yes. now I got this value and what I am going to do is I told you that uh, I cannot change my C because C is fixed but I can change my B But uh, I can hold the value of small b, small a, and small c are changing. Actually, I calculated it wrongly. Uh, S, I will go back. Object property, basic, b by a. So you see, however you change, this S of B is not going to change. For any triangle, S of B is not going to change. That is, uh, S of B is nothing but uh, the opposite side of this side and divided by hypotenuse. So it is always fixed for this 45 degree angle. But if I change this angle, the things will change. So let us see that uh, little more detailed construction. What I will do is I will go to the same constructions. So this just okay. I think uh, our time is over. So. We'll